A very good morning to you. Welcome to the West Ham Voice on a Friday morning. Um, there's been quite a lot of news about West Ham this week, um, but unfortunately, I just haven't had the time to bring you any update shows. My, so my apologies for that. I haven't done one since uh, Monday's West Ham Weekly. Um, now, if you're new to the channel, uh, it's the first time you're you're experiencing the West Ham Voice, or if you've been here before but you've yet to become a subscriber then please please do consider becoming a subscriber of the channel. It's free of charge, doesn't cost anything, and it would be very much appreciated and it would give you an alert as to when my next show is coming up. And whether you are first time or passing through again uh, or an existing subscriber, please also hit that like button as well. So with all the news uh, that's been banded around, um, what should we start with? Well, why don't we start with uh, the managerial post? Or should I say, or correct myself in saying, um, the head coach role at West Ham United? Now, pretty much every West Ham fan believes, well, not just every West Ham fan, but an awful lot of social media channels and journalists, etc., believe that if Huda Lopetegui does not beat Everton, at the London Stadium this coming weekend, then the board will give him the sack. To go further, even if we do uh, beat uh, Everton, but we beat them not convincingly, if the performance is not convincing enough uh, to make us feel that there's a sense of direction at West Ham at last, then Lopetegui could still walk. Now, if we believe the stories uh, only, uh, that only a strong performance will suffice, um, then it's going to be interesting to see what will really happen if we just scrape through against Everton at the weekend. Now, we all know that West Ham don't usually go for sacking a manager during the season. Uh, and if, uh, any, if, if any, anything, they're likely to want to stick with him, preferably for the whole season and hope that it all comes uh, good in the end. Um, or at the very least, what they would normally do is give the manager, the coach, until the end of the calendar year to see where we're at more or less halfway through the season. If you recall, under this current ownership, there's only two managers that have been sacked mid-season, and they're Slaven Bilic and Manuel Pellegrini. Now, if Lopetegui does get sacked, the rumour mill um, as to who might replace him has been non-stop all week. Now, let's briefly address for a moment uh, the previous uh, manager, uh, David Moyes. He was interviewed on the Overla uh, Overlap podcast, uh, Stick to Football, earlier in the week, where he revealed that West Ham had offered him a new contract, but it was retracted by David Sullivan um, last year. Now, Moyes stated that the contract that he was offered was not favourable, and I'll cover what I think, why I think that is in a moment. Uh, and that Moyes wanted to think about the contract, but then he said, with three defeats in a row, Sullivan withdrew the offer. Now he, uh, Moyes said that uh, the offer was withdrawn at the end of last calendar year, but uh, the three games—I can't remember what what they were—but the three games that we lost in a row, I think they were in January or maybe even February. I can't remember correctly. Uh, but they certainly weren't at the end of the calendar year. Now, I've also noted that the West Ham social media channels um, are having a go at Sullivan for having pulled the contract and doing the dirty on David Moyes. And yet, when you read all the various um, uh, social media channels um, on uh, on Twitter, etc., and various other platforms, um, these are the same social media channels that uh, would have been absolutely apoplectic uh, had the contract remained on the table and had Moyes signed it and stayed on as manager. Now, I think in hindsight, we all knew that it was the end for David Moyes. And for whatever reason, Sullivan went along with that notion. Um, so let's move on uh, I'm, uh, for a minute. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to why that contract wasn't uh, valid when I talk about Steyden later on. But let's move on to the current head coach. Now, with the prospect of uh, Lopetegui losing against Everton, uh, according to Jacob Steinberg, West Ham is said to have conducted background checks and due diligence on three key head coach targets. The three are said to be Sebastian Hoeneß, Kasper Hulmund, and Roger Schmidt. 
Let's start off with uh, Sebastian Hunas first. Uh, he is currently in charge of Stuttgart, 42 years of age. And last season, he guided them to Champions League qualification for the first time since 2009, when they finished second in the Bundesliga behind uh, Leverkusen. His coaching techniques are considered to be quite exciting and very attack-minded, with various formations used, such as a 4-4-2 or even a 3-2-5. Yes, that does sound quite extreme. And in a high build, Hunas's 3-2-5 formation with a back three, two holding midfielders and five players up front creates numerical supremacy superiority in midfield and allows Stuttgart to play through a press. Very attack-minded. Five up front. Bloody hell. Stuttgart often use a mid-block with a triggered press. They react positively when possession is lost and set up to regain the ball uh, back pretty quickly. Um, this proactive approach helps them with a counter press effectively. Now, Hunus um, will adopt various formations accordingly: uh, four two three one, four four two, four one four one, four three three, and so on. Um, but the frequent use of four four two is pretty notable, as it allows Stuttgart to maintain balance and flexibility in their play. Now, Hunus still has just under three years left on his managerial contract, so with that in mind. And with his involvement in Europe, um, would it appear to be rather unrealistic uh, to think that maybe uh, he would leave mid-season? I don't know. It's probably unlikely that he would be willing to leave a club competing in Champions League football uh, to go to a club that's n neither con competing in Europe nor uh, competing to be top half of the Premier League. Well, we're competing, but we're not succeeding to be top half of the Premier League. Now, his success last season is quite remarkable, given he took the job on back in April 2023 when the club were bottom of the Bundes Bundesliga. He kept them up via relegation playoffs before leading them to their highest Bundesliga finish since 2007. His win percentage rate at the Bundesliga outfit is 58%, 38 wins, 13 draws and 15 defeats in 66 games. It's not bad. Next up is uh, Kasper uh, Hulman, 10 years older than Hunas and was the Denmark manager that lost to England in the Euro 2021 semifinals. He resigned in July this year after Denmark lost to Germany at Euro 2024 round of 16 stage. It followed four fairly successful years in the dugout for uh, the Danish team. Aside from impressing uh, showing as a, uh, as a Danish boss, um, where he had a 59% win record, Hulmans has a rather underwhelming managerial record at uh, club level. He's known for his flexible, possession-based tactical approach. He often uses a front three in possession, typically a 4-3-3 formation. He encourages his fullbacks to advance beyond the midfielders, providing additional width and options in attack. His teams are known for their possession-based style, aiming to dominate the ball and control the tempo of a game. Hulman is not rigid in his formations either, and he also adapts according to players available and the match situation. So he's used various formations such as 3-4-3, 3-5-2 and so on. But to be honest, on reading about his details, he does sound an awful lot like Lopetegui. In his approach, you know, the fullbacks marauding forward and possession-based football and so on. Now, he's managed um, Norgeland in two spells with a brief stint at uh, German club Mainz in between. He was sacked by Mainz after just nine months in uh, when he won just five games in 24. A year later, he returned to Norgeland for a second spell and he managed a win ratio of just 38%. Not great. And then the third person on um, the list is uh, Roger Schmidt. Uh, and his managerial record is pretty impressive. The 57-year-old has managed the likes of Red Bull Salzburg, where he won the Australian Bundesliga back in 2014. He's managed Leverkusen, PSV and uh, Benfica, where he won the Portuguese Primera League. Um, the German has managed over 800 games in his career. And he's never left a club without a win ratio of below 50%. That's pretty impressive. 
Schmidt is also known for his innovative and dynamic tactical approach. Some key aspects include setting his team up in a 4-2-3-1, uh, wingers starting wide, coming in when the play starts in order to create uh, numerical superiority in midfield. His teams are known for their proactive pressing schemes and uh, reacting quickly when they lose possession in order to regain the ball back pretty fast. Now, like the other coaches, Smitched, uh, Schmidt sorry, adapts his formations based on match situations. He was recently sacked by Benfica after a pretty poor start to the new season, but he was in charge for a little over two years and had a 70% win ratio. He lost just 15 of his 115 games in charge of the club. In his first season, though, he won his first 13 matches in charge, including uh, in the Champions League. He lost his first match in Portugal after 30 games in charge. Now, he's won trophies at uh, Salzburg. He's won trophies at PSV and Benfica. And he's currently the only one of three managers who is out of work and of the three coaches listed, um, he may be more likely the candidate to be approached because of his immediate availability. Hunas was uh, um, going back to Hunas, he has a release clause, which is reported to be a mere five million pounds. But as I said earlier, would he leave Stuttgart to join West Ham? At this moment in time, Stuttgart just have got four points in four games in the Champions League group stages and may not manage to progress into the next stage. But perhaps it's just too early in the season for him to walk away from that role just yet. Stuttgart are currently eighth in the Bundesliga. And although there is a long way to go in the German season, uh, they're not doing as well as they were last season. Keep an eye out. Maybe the lure of working in the Premier League and also working alongside fellow German technical director Steiden might tempt Hoeneß. But um, will we pay the five million uh, release clause? Sullivan is not known for paying any release clauses at any value for any manager and often prefers to go for a manager that is either finishing his contract or already out of work. Other names have been included. Uh, the former Chelsea and Lazio manager, um, Maurizio Sarri, 67 years of age. Jose Mourinho has also been uh, muted. Uh, and he couldn't have made it any clearer, what, last week, week before, that he doesn't really think much of Turkish football. Uh, other notable coaches include Graham Potter Ed, and Edin, Edin Turcic, who's also, they're both out of work as well. Um, and then one more um, manager. Uh, is um, the new? He's classed as the new Mourinho, Sergio Conceição, the 49-year-old manager who's also currently without a club after leaving Porto, where he spent seven years winning multiple league titles, domestic trophies, uh, and as well as having experience in the Champions League. And yet another manager with a progressive approach. So I guess really all eyes are going to be on what's going to happen in the London Stadium this coming Saturday. Um, and it's going to be interesting to say uh, whether there's an element of nervousness in Lopetegui's approach, uh, which might exude to the players on the pitch. Now, what we do know is that Lopetegui will be without three, possibly four key players for the game against Everton. After his two yellow cards last weekend, Edson Alvarez is definitely missing. Uh, but Lopetegui will welcome back uh, Thomas Socek after his illness. Socek has talked about wanting to lead West Ham, but at the same time acknowledged uh, in an interview that Bowen has got the armband. But despite that, he talked about wanting to be a leader out on the pitch. He wants to demonstrate his leadership skills, even if he doesn't have the armband. Now, talking of um, captains and etc., uh, the latest football prizes competition offers you a chance to win a Jared Bowen and Saeed Benrama signed and dual framed shirt display. The display will take us back to the better days of, of West Ham when we won the Europa Conference League final in 2023. There's also a chance to win 15 instant West Ham prizes. So go to footballprizes.co.uk for all the details and the competition ends on Wednesday the 13th of November at 7.30pm. Now, who else will be missing? 
apart from Edson Alvarez? Well, one notable absentee in training uh, this week has been Alphonse Ariola. Hasn't spotted we haven't spotted him in any of the video training uh, videos that have been put out of the training sessions. Uh, so it could be another week of Fabianski keeping his place in the first team. Now, even if Ariola does return, uh, if he's not selected, he stands a chance of losing more than just his place in the West Ham team, but also his place in the French national squad. The form of 23-year-old uh, Lille goalkeeper Lucas Chevalier has been hitting the headlines of late, and there's a call f- to bring him into the French senior squad. So if Ariola um, uh, doesn't come back into the team, he's got a lot more to lose than just his place at West Ham. We've heard in the press conference by Lopetegui that Nicholas Fulkrug is again missing and Lopetegui has admitted now that the injury to the player um, seems to be a lot worse than originally thought. I think we probably knew this for a long time and we talked last week about him going out uh, to Germany to have various injections, but it seems I've got a feeling now, given that it's taken quite a while and the injections don't seem to have worked, um, He's, I did say the injections do take a couple of days to uh, bed in and then you need a few weeks to sort of get your fitness back again, etc. So if he doesn't return after the next international break, it could be that he may not return for a quite a while longer. And then we see what might have to happen in the transfer window in January to look for a potential uh, replacement. Then, of course, uh, Mohamed Kudus will also be missing uh, the game, uh, which is uh, the third game in a row as part of his original um, uh, ban uh, due to the sending off he got against Spurs. Uh, And then, of course, as you know, uh, there's been an appeal about his uh, suspension, about the red card, uh, which we've lost. But um, it could have been worse. I kind of expected um, Kudus to receive another three games ban, but he's only received another two games banned. So with that in mind, he will be missing for the Newcastle game after the international break, as well as the visit, excuse me, of Arsenal uh, the following week. Now, Kudus gave us a bit of an insight as to what really could be bothering him this season. And it may not be the fact that he's actually playing out on the left side of attack for West Ham. In his statement to the FA when faced with the prospect of having his suspension extended, could have stated that he was already mentally and physically stressed before the game against Spurs and that the stress was a fact as a factor of having to travel extensively with um, to appear for the Ghanaian international team on international duty, plus the fact that he'd been receiving an awful lot of negative press from social media about his specific performances for Ghana. Now, I've talked about that before. I've talked about the criticism that Kudus has been getting from Ghanaian press and social media and fans, Ghanaian fans as well. He clearly feels very proud to represent his nation. And it must be a heavy burden on him to have that sort of weight on his shoulders to continuously be the star man uh, to deliver at a high level every single time. Um, It hasn't worked out for him. Uh, or for Ghana, and they seem to be on the brink of not qualifying for next year's AFCON tournament. Ironically, the next time you're going to likely see Kudus in action uh, is going to be for Ghana next week when they face Angola and Niger in two further AFCON qualifiers. I hope for his sake that he has a couple of really storming performances so that he can return to West Ham refreshed before being available for selection against Leicester in early December. Now, what was good to see uh, in the training sessions that were videoed uh, was to see several academy players in the mix, with most notably 17-year-old central midfielder Preston Fearon and 20-year-old centre-back Sean Tarima featuring quite prominently in those sessions this week. Um, It's good that Lopetegui is bringing in those youngsters to give them a feel of what it's like to be around the senior team. Now, going back to Kudus, earlier this week, there was a story that Arsenal could yet again come looking to lure one of our best players away after securing the services of Declan Rice for £105 million. It's been suggested that rather than waiting till the summer 
for Kudus's £85 million release clause to come into effect, Arsenal might be tempted to bid around £90 million as early as this January transfer window. Kudus is certainly not happy this season, with rumours of bust-ups with Lopetegui, added to the unhappiness of being played out of position, added to the issues that he's got with the Ghanaian national team. Now, personally, I don't think West Ham will be remotely interested in letting the player go, even if Arsenal do offer more than the 85 million release clause, uh, merely because it would just be too difficult to get a player uh, a replacement for him in January. But having said that, if there's £90 million on the table, which could go towards bringing in maybe a replacement attacking winger or a better central midfielder, as well as a striker, then maybe, just maybe, West Ham might be tempted. This is where we expect Tim Steiden and his entourage, his scouting entourage, to do the business. If there's an offer of £90 million, if they can identify two or three players and there's space in the squad to allow two or three players to come in, then who knows? But I think it's probably going to be kept. We know Kudus is going to go at the end of the season. I think it's more likely he'll go then than he would in January. Staying with West Ham and Arsenal, uh, with the announcement that Edu uh, is leaving Arsenal's sporting director role to become the head of football at three clubs owned by Greek billionaire Evangelos Marinakis, it is suggested that Tim Steiden could be in line to replace the Brazilian Edu. Um, now, he will oversee footballing matters, I said at three clubs, all owned by him. So he'll be overseeing uh, matters at Nottingham Forest, Olympiacos and Portuguese, Portuguese club Rio Ave. Um, Nottingham Forest, interesting. You know, they, they're really going, going for it. They've got a lot of backing. And uh, to bring to get someone like Edu in is um, quite a coup for them. He's currently serving six months gardening leave and he won't start his new role till around, what, April uh, 2025. There's a temporary replacement in charge, uh, Jason Ato, who's stepping up within the club, uh, which will give Arsenal time to find a suitable replacement for him. And it's been suggested that Steiden could be in consideration. Now, um, we know that Steiden loves to self-promote and there are suggestions that he put himself in the shop window when look when Liverpool were looking for a sporting director replacement. Uh, let's wait and see what happens. But it's already beginning to feel that the Steiden loving with West Ham seems to be well and truly over and that he would jump at the chance to go to a bigger Premier League club. Um, I'm going to do, I'm writing a script about Steiden and it will not surprise me in the least if Steiden actually does leave West Ham. But I'm writing a script about Steiden and uh, the summer transfer window. The one we were lauding him, you know, as a success. But it's turning out to be further from that than, than we thought. One thing that may be against him is that is uh, his input in player purchases, which hasn't quite gone as well uh, this season as we thought we it would. Um, and there's also now speculation that was also, well, not now, but there's always been a rumour that he was not really the instigator of bringing either um, Kudus or Alvarez to the club either. Um, so before um, Steiden's, you know, before anything happens, Steiden's credential, uh, credentials might not be as high as he himself may think. It's going to be interesting to see how that pans out as well. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Do leave your comments um, uh, about the show. Tell me your thoughts about the various bits and news that I've updated you on. Uh, and like I said, if you're first time to this channel uh, or if you've been here before but not yet subscribed, then please do hit that subscribe button and please also hit the like button. Thank you all for watching and thank you all for listening. And I will see you all again very soon. There's a game coming up, of course, uh, possibly a Friday night live, by the way might happen on Friday night. What else? Uh, and of course, I'll be at the Everton game and I'll bring you updates and reports from that as well. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And I'll see you all soon.